when you ask Jesus to come live on the inside of you, is it okay to go back to your old life? We're going to address that question today. Let's acknowledge Jesus. Jesus, we thank you and praise you that you're always reaching out to us, making things clear as to how to be ready to move in with you that day. We love you. We praise you. Give you all the glory. He's so good and he's so in love with you and he wants to correct our, our thinking that is mistaken of him. And so the question is, when you ask Jesus to come live on the inside of you, is that where it ends or does it go on from there? Do you develop that relationship with him and prepare to move in with him? Yes, you do. You don't just say this prayer and then go back to the way you were before. You don't, you don't live like you did before. You don't think like you did before. Nothing is the same because when you have this relationship with Jesus, when you have this encounter with him, everything changes. You fall in love with him. You find out life is so much better his way. You get to know him more and more every day. And it just changes who you are. If you just know about Jesus, if you don't really know him, then you're probably the person that just heard about him and, and said a prayer because you thought you should, because you thought that's how you are, or maybe you were taught that's how you are a Christian, that that's how it works. And so you never really met him, but you just heard of him and thought you had to say that prayer so that you have this ticket to move in with him that day. And so then this video is for you because that's not the truth. You have to be born of the Spirit. Jesus says you can't see into the kingdom of God unless you're born of the Spirit. You can't even see. You, you, you can't see what the person who has committed to Jesus can see. And, and nothing is going to make sense to you until you make that commitment. And then he opens your eyes and you see what you couldn't see before. Everything is now different. You, you can see who he is. You can feel his feelings. Um, you see his perceptive, his perception on things where before those things just didn't make any sense. You don't talk the way you used to talk. You, you don't think the way you used to think you, you probably don't dress the way you used to dress because you understand his holiness you, you understand what is good and 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 the holy spirit actually comes and lives on the inside of you and he will convict you of any wrongdoing anything that would grieve him you know like if you swore before you won't be swearing anymore you, you're just a different person because you met the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, and he just changes you. And the goodness that, that, you, that you've encountered with him, you want it. You understand that before you were evil, and it wasn't good. And that, that person that you were before dies. And you have this new man. You have Jesus living on the inside of you. And so you just know that things aren't going to be the same anymore. And sometimes that even means friendships. Because your friends may not understand how you're thinking anymore and, and why you're so in love with this man that you can't even see. They're just not going to get it. And so don't be afraid to just let those relationships go because Jesus is going to give you eternal life. And if you reject him because you want to keep your friends and it's too hard to say goodbye, then on that day when you stand before him, he's going to have to reject you. He said in Matthew 7, 21 through 23, not everyone who calls me Lord will enter into the kingdom of heaven because lots of people mistakenly call him Lord and really He's not their Lord because they're just living the way they did before they said that prayer that they thought was going to save them. If you call him Lord, you're going to do life his way. You're going to do his will. You're going to know what he's thinking. When you truly are born again, 
um, and read John 3, when you're born from above, you're, you're going to see what you couldn't see before, as I said. Life is going to be different because now you see who Jesus really is and what it's really about. And before you couldn't see that. And so, um, verse 22, he said that a lot of people are going to be arguing with him. And, and it's a picture of you standing before him that day. And a lot of people are going to be arguing with him and saying, but Lord. And, and maybe someone will be saying, I went to Sunday. I went to church every Sunday. I went to Bible study on Wednesday night. I, I said that prayer. Whatever you think you did that is going to help you enter, enter into the kingdom of heaven, you're going to be saying to him, but you have to know the truth. Why do you want to take a chance? And the way to know the truth is look at his word. In the beginning was the word, and the word is God. He is his word. And when you get to know the word, you get to know who he is, what he thinks. When the Holy Spirit comes and lives on the inside of you, he's going to show you what he's thinking, how he feels, what's right and what's wrong. And he's going to nudge you, Revelation 3.19. He said he corrects those that he loves. So he's going to correct you, convince you, convince you of the truth, convict you of your sin. But he's a gentleman. He won't force himself upon you. But he's here talking to you right now through me to tell you that if you just said that prayer and nothing's changed in your life, you really didn't meet him. Because what you're saying is, he, he, we are the bride of Christ. He is the bridegroom. And so what you're really saying when you pray is that you want to marry him. And then while you're here, you get ready to marry him by renewing your mind, Romans 12, 2. You're changed. You're not conformed to the world. You've renewed your mind to think like he thinks. And he starts revealing truth to you. The Holy Spirit, Jesus said to his disciples, because they were freaking out when he left. And he said, don't worry. He said, I'm not going to leave you as orphans, but I'm going to send you. The, the Father's going to send the Holy Spirit, and he's going to live on the inside of you. He's going to remind you of the things I said. He's going to tell you things to come. You're going to know things that other people just can't know that don't know him. And so if you just said that prayer out of fear of going to hell or you didn't really mean it, you just said it because um, you, you thought that's what you had to do to get that ticket, you can just change that. You can decide to commit to him. You can decide to believe him and then he will reveal himself to you. But he knows if you mean it or not. He knows what you're thinking. He knows everything about you. He's God. And, and so if you don't mean it, you're not going to meet him. You're not going to know him. But if you mean it, he's going to reveal himself to you, and he's going to come and live on the inside of you, and he's going to teach you his way. And your part is to obey him, to take heed to his voice. Revelation 3.20, he said he's knocking at the door of your heart. And if you would answer that knock, by taking heed to his voice, he's going to come and live on the inside of you. He's going to change your life. You're going to fall in love with him. He's going to teach you how to get ready for that day. You might leave here before he comes, and you still want to know him, but if he comes while you're here, then you have to have already made that choice. And you, and you have to make it either way. But you have to make that choice before he gets here or it will be too late. Because in verse 23, he said that um, those who, who won't do his will, even seeking him is doing his will, getting to know who he is. He said, I'm going to stay away from me. I never knew you, you who practice lawlessness, because you rejected him. When you won't do his will, when you won't seek him, when you won't decide to believe him, if you don't believe me and you just think that all you got to do is say that prayer because so-and-so told you that, then he's going to reject you that day. He's going to stay away from me. I didn't know you. You who practice lawlessness. So the thing is, if you're going to move in with him, 
you got to come in agreement with him. You have to be in agreement. If you're going to get married to someone in the natural here on the earth, you're going to be in agreement. You're going to take time to get to know that person. You're going to fall probably more and more in love with that person. And then you get ready for that wedding day. And that's what he's asking you to do. Will you marry me? Will you get ready? And the way you get ready is to be changed. Be changed to be like him. And you let him do that. As you change your mind to think he, the way he does by looking at the word. And he's going to recreate you in his likeness and put you on a path. That leads to the good life. He has something wonderful here for you to do. You weren't put here to try to figure out what you're going to eat, what you're going to drink, and what you're going to wear. But he, he, you're gifted. God gifted you. We have a talent on the inside of you that is going to bring you happiness, peace, joy, contentment. It, it's going to give you a zeal for life. You're going to get up every day and do what you were created to do. And it's going to, you're going to be happy. It's, it gives you purpose. You're going to have joy. And you're going to be getting ready to live with him at the same time. How wonderful is that? He has so much good for us. And, and people don't know it because they don't give him attention. Because they're, they're so busy trying to figure out what they're going to eat, what they're going to drink, and what they're going to wear. In Matthew 6, Jesus said, life's more important than that. And really... When you do the thing that God asked you to do, Jesus said that God was going to add to you what you need and besides. So it's not about trying to figure all this out. It's about doing what he created you to do, do his plan. He has a good plan for you. And when you do that, when you do life his way, Matthew 6, 38, when you seek his kingdom and his way of doing and being right, everything you need will be added to you. He's going to add it to you. He's going to take care of you. He loves you. And so the, the real deal is, if you want to commit to Jesus, you just say, Jesus, would you come and live on the inside of me and be my God? I'm going to heed to your voice. Show me who you are. And if you commit to him, if you do that every single day, Romans 10, 17 says, faith comes by hearing the word of God. Romans 10 says, if you call on the name of the Lord, you'll be saved. If you call on him every day, you get faith from looking at the word of God. You get faith from hearing him. And if you're seeking him, you're going to hear him. In John 10, it says, my sheep know my voice. If you want to make that commitment today, let's pray now. Pray with me. Jesus we commit to you. We decide to believe. We're going to answer that knock at the door of our heart. We're going to do what you tell us to do. We decide to believe. Now we're asking you, show yourself to us. Show us who you are. Reveal yourself to us, Jesus. Prepare us to get ready for that day to stand before you. We love you and we praise you. Thank you, Jesus. Now, if you meant that, you probably felt him come and live on the inside of you. You probably felt him move in. You felt his presence. And maybe you didn't, but you just know. He's going to make himself real to you if you really meant that. And so now your part is to seek him. Matthew 7, he said, Seek, and you'll find. Knock, and the door will be open. Seek to do his will. Look at the word every day so faith comes, so that you can be empowered. Because as soon as you hear the word, Jesus said, the enemy is going to come and try to take it. And, and remember, Jesus is a word. God is a word. And so he's going to come and try to take God from you. He's going to try to talk you out of it. But all you have to do is ask Jesus to help you to stand firm, and he will. He's amazing. He loves you. And so get on your knees every day and worship him. Worship him in how you live your life. Don't go back to your old life. If you go back to your old life, then you're really rejecting Jesus. It's not too hard because Jesus will help you to do it. 
There's going to be a lot of pressure that comes around you from the enemy, but greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. And so if you said that prayer, I'd love it so much if you let me know. Remember, every day, look at the Word. If you don't have a Bible, I'm sure you have a phone or a computer. You can go to BibleGateway.com, and you can start reading the Bible right there. Start with Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, the New Testament, and get to know who Jesus is, and then just agree with him. He said to me one day, he said, so many people think they're going to move in with me one day, but they don't agree with me. They don't have time for me. And um, some people don't even like him. But still they think, everybody thinks, oh, we are all going to heaven. And you're not. You, you have to come in agreement with him. So come in agreement with him. Do whatever you feel like he's telling you to do and make sure you look at the word and do the word and he'll be there. Don't go back to your old life. Don't go back to your old ways, but keep seeking him. He'll change you from the inside out. God bless you. Thank you so much for listening today.